On the 7th of September 2023, the UK Office has updated the statement of changes in immigration rule and one of those changes would be implemented on the 28th of September 2023 while the other changes made will be implemented or is going to take effect from the 5th of October 2023. So if you're currently in the UK or you're planning to move into the UK in the next couple of days or weeks, then you sure do want to watch this video to the end so you get yourself updated on some of the changes made by the UK Home Office as regards their immigration rules because as the saying goes um, ignorance is not an excuse so you need to ensure you keep yourself updated so if this sounds like something you'd like to know please click on the like button click on the red subscribe button to join the amazing growing family and my turning subscribers you guys are amazing thank you guys for being here i really do appreciate you guys so without further ado let's get right into the video some of the changes made by the Home Office affect people on different categories ranging from health and care visa, student visa, skilled worker visa and many other visa categories. So the first change or the first update made by the UK Home Office is regarding access to public funds. Now the government has added to the list of state benefits and public benefits that cannot be accessed by a person who has no recourse to public funds. Now, for so many people who have been able to get their BRP, um, it's been clearly stated that if you're on a student visa, health and care visa, skilled worker visa, basically on a temporary resident permit, you are not allowed to access public funds. And so many people have been getting rejections on their next visa application because of this reason. So it's very important for you to understand some of the benefits you should not even apply for. Because when people apply for this benefit that they're not qualified for, and probably because of the lack of you know, um, expertise on the person handling the application, they end up giving people some of this um, you know, benefits and at the long run or on the long run, the home office end up rejecting future applications, visa application for people who enjoy these benefits. So it's important for you to understand what are the changes, what are the different um, public funds, state public funds or public funds you don't have access to as a skilled worker or as a student in the United Kingdom. I'm just going to mention a few. You can go on the website in the description of this video to read more about some of those you know uh, benefits that you shouldn't access so the first thing is housing under part six or seven of the housing act 1996 so there are some housing benefits that are basically for people who have got indefinite um, leave to remain in the uk and i know of people who applied for some of those benefits benefits like you know accessing council apartments now the person access uh, the person uh, you know review your application might not have full understanding of some phase probably the person is still new on the job and then gets proper authorization or probably an oversight so some people who are on student visas were able to access council tax and i think i shared on this channel a couple of months ago how these people were you know, went ahead to apply for the UK post study visa and they got rejected because of the fact that they access public funds in relation to housing. So ensure that you don't, you know, apply for any of those things. Now, a social fund maternity expenses payment made under section 1381 of the social security contribution and benefits. Yeah, for those who are on student visa or on skilled worker visa or health and care visa, you want to give birth to a child in the UK, there are some funds that you have access to that are not termed as public funds. However, there are also other funds under the maternity care that you are not eligible for as a student or someone on a skilled worker visa or on a dependent visa. So it's very important for you to make sure you have you have adequate information and ensure that the benefit you are getting or the funds you are getting to your account has no relation to a public fund. Another one is called the severe, uh, the severe disablement allowance, care allowance, disability living allowance, and many others. So there are so many of those things. You're probably just going to put a link. We have the social fund. We have the universal credit on our part one of the welfare reform. The universal credit, personal independence payments or domestic rates. And many others cancel tax reduction yeah this is very important as a skilled worker or as a student you are not eligible to cancel tax reduction so I should just ensure that you read through the link in the description to have better understanding of some of the things or some of the public funds you should not have access to as an international student 
or as a skilled worker. Now, the next change that is made on the immigration rule is as regards the occupation list under the skilled worker visa. And it's super exciting to know that an additional um, um, job role has been added and this is known as the prison officer so prison officer job role has been added as an occupation with a standard occupational cl um, classification code so uk employers can sponsor them to come into the uk on a skilled worker so if a prison officer in your home country you've got an experience working as a prison officer this is an exciting news it means that you can now get a job role as a prison officer with the certificate of sponsorship to sponsor your visa to move into the united kingdom now another major change made is as regards um dependent um child applicants now this is what this means people have been asking questions what does it mean to be a um, dependent child so for instance in a situation whereby um a child is applying for a visa into the United Kingdom um, either as uh, a dependent or as a main applicant. Now there's some other additional documentation that are now required by the UK Home Office for application. So for instance, if the child is coming into the UK, um, let's say for instance to study and the parents are not also in the UK uh, and the child is applying independently for a visa, it's very important for the child to provide some additional um, document one which is um, a consent letter from the parents just to show that the parents are in agreement for the child to come into the united kingdom on a visa especially if the child is still dependent on the parents basically a dependent child is someone that is below 18 that's still living under a parent or a guardian so there must be um, a consent letter written by both parents or one of the parents if um the child is raised by a single parent or from the applicant's legal um, guardian this information this written consent must provide contact details of the parents or legal guardians and confirm support for all the following the application the applicant's living and care arrangements in the uk if the applicant uh, if the application is for entry clearance the applicant's travel the applicant's travel to and reception arrangements in the United Kingdom so basically it's just for um, a dependent child who is coming to the UK for whichever reason either to study or whatsoever another important change made by the UK government is as regards people who don't normally require a uh, visa to come into the UK um, which is which involves the introduction of what is called the electronic travel authorization so the new eta will be phased in and will eventually apply to anyone traveling to the uk who currently do, does not require a visa for a short um, uk stay so basically the plan is that the eta scheme will progress through countries being added to the eta scheme for example qatar residents traveling to the uk will require an eta from the november 2023 um, you know, residents of the United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, um, Jordan, and so many other countries traveling to the UK will require ETA from February 2024. Additional countries will continue to be added to the ETA scheme, and this is basically a way of the government um, trying to. Say, the ETA is quite cheap anyway. I think the application is about ten pounds, so it's not quite a lot. But if you're planning to come into the UK, you sure do need to provide this particular. Uh, visa or this particular um, travel documents and also another change that is made basically on um, the um, uk visa is that eu settlement scheme has changed now if a person has secured limited leave under the appendix eu as a dependent parent or child evidence of dependency does not need to be provided in subsequent um, application and also change has been made on the youth mobility scheme the age limit of youth mobility scheme applications for nationals of australia and canada is to be increased from 30 to 35 years in addition um, there's their period of stay to increase to two years out of three years so these are some of the changes made as regards to uk immigration if you find this video is also click on the like button and if you're coming across this channel for the first time please hit the subscribe button to join the amazing growing family and my returning subscribers thank you guys for being here i really do appreciate you guys so this will be the end of this video and i'll see you guys in my next video thank you